Hey guys, it's Mr. Sheelan here. This is going to be the video for all of those check your understandings um, uh, for the unit 5.1 notes. And I'm just adjusting the camera here just a little bit. Cool. Okay. So uh, this is again, just going to be check your understanding for uh, unit 5.1 notes. So let's just get straight to it. So check your understanding number one. This is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle one. Uh, I could not tell you which character that is. It's just the blue guy with the katanas. Okay, <clears throat> so determine the momentum of a Pacific leatherback turtle uh, who has a mass of 8.6 times two, or times 10 to the second power kilograms swimming at a velocity of 1.3 meters per second forward. So looks like here, writing down what we know and what we don't know, uh, looks like here we have uh, this dude who has a mass of... It's 8.6, but, but times 10 to the second power, but we're just going to say it's 860 kilograms is really what it is. It's 860 kilograms, okay? And he's traveling at a velocity, at a general average velocity here of 1.3 meters per second. Now, we're going to ignore uh, any kind of friction here. We're just saying this is his speed. We've already taken into account the, the friction where... A, well, maybe we're not so much taking into account, but we're just ignoring it, okay? We need to find the momentum. What is the momentum here, okay? What is the momentum? So our momentum, as we've learned now, it is just simple. You know, moment, momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So we're just going to bring that up here. So it will be P with that arrow, oh, which because this is forward. P here is going to be equal to 860 times 1.3. And it looks like my brown is starting to kind of wash out here. Got to get a new marker. And so it's going to be 860. 860 times 1.3, which is going to be 1118, uh, specifically kilograms by meters per second. We're not done yet. It is going to be... <clears throat> More specifically, it is going to be 1,118 kilograms by meters per second forward. Okay, because remember, we have to have that direction when we have our answer there. So um, another, if you had, if you were keeping sig figs, it would be 1.1 times 10 to the third kilograms by meters per second forward. Okay, cool beans. So there's number one. So let's now move on to number two. So number two here, a car possesses momentum. How would the momentum change if A, B, and C would happen? So this should have been on the uh, problems that you worked on the other day. So if the velocity is doubled, I don't know, let's just, let's just, if, if, if the velocity was doubled, let's just like kind of make up a, a, a pretend equation here. Let's just say that, oh, let's just say that for the sake of argument, we have a mass of 10, we have a velocity of two, that will be 10, sorry, kilograms of velocity of two meters per second. Um, and, and we're trying to figure out what would happen to momentum. So if we increased, if we doubled our velocity by two, or sorry, if we doubled it, so then um, normally our velocity here would be 10 times two. So our momentum would normally be, we'll say the 20 you know, kilograms by meters per second. Now, if we doubled it though, P is then equal to 10 times four. So then it would be, momentum would be 40 kilograms by meters per second. So, so it would double. So when you double the velocity, you are doubling the momentum, okay? Let's say if the mass is doubled, what would happen then? Well, if the mass is doubled, okay, still keeping this idea, if the mass was doubled, so that would be 20 times two, well, it's the same thing. If the mass is doubled, then our momentum has doubled, okay? Easy peasy. Now, what would happen if the velocity was tripled and the mass was cut in half. What would happen there? Well, again, still using this 20 up here. So if the velocity was tripled, so that's two times three, um, 
So velocity would be 2 times 3, so that's 6. And then the mass was cut in half, so that would be 5. So 5 kilograms times 6 meters per second. That would mean that our final answer here would be 30 uh, kilograms by meters per second in whatever direction it's, it's heading. So, so we would say here, for A, it doubled. For B, it doubled. So A and B, it doubled. While for C, well, what happened here? Well, for C, it increased by, by one and a half. So we'd say it increased at a magnitude of one and a half. Okay. Or 1.5 times. Okay. How do I know that? Well, what's one times 20? One times 20 is, is 20. What's 0 0.5? 0 0.5 times 20 is 10. 10 plus 20 is 30. So 1.5 1, 1 times that. And you can also just multiply that. What's 20 times 1.5 is 30. Okay. Good. On to number three. Okay, come on. So getting into impulse now. So, so you're driving here for number three. You're driving in a car, which has a mass. Sorry about that, but someone just messaged me. Of course it doesn't show up. Perfect. Um, check or understand number three. So you're driving in a car, which has a mass of one point, basically 1,000 kilograms and traveling at 30 kilometers per hour. You lose control and it smashes into a concrete wall, essentially stopping the momentum of the car in 10 seconds. Okay. Uh, let's see, sorry, in 10 seconds. So we have to find the momentum, the force required to stop the car, um, and then some added material after that. So let's just focus on A for right now. So focusing on A, I gotta move a couple of things on my computer. So looks like here for, for A, we are given the mass of this car and it is, I'm gonna write 1,000 kilograms. Okay, it's 1,000 kilograms. It's traveling at a velocity of 30 uh, kilometers per hour, okay, which will have to change into meters per second. Um, and it says here that it essentially stops the momentum of your car in 10 seconds. So more or less it's saying that it's in contact with whatever it's hitting, or not for 10 seconds, sorry, but for 0 0.10 seconds. So we've got time, okay, 0 0.10 seconds. So what is the moment of your car at impact? So at the moment of impact, A is gonna be super easy. Okay, so we're going to say here that at moment of impact, we are saying that it is going to be just easy peasy, just our mass times our velocity, which is going to then turn into 1,000 times whatever this is at meters per second. So real quick, um, I'm just going to, since we've done this a number of times, I'm just going to do this real quick. So uh, this will be 30, uh, let's see, 1,000 on the bottom. Oh shoot, no, I do have to write this out. Three thousand or thirty. One kilometer, one thousand meters, hour, one hour, thirty-six. Okay. So it'll be thirty times one thousand divided by thirty-six hundred. So it's ninety-one point seven meters per second. So it's one thousand times 91.7 meters per second. So then for letter A, our answer here is going to be, just to have it correct here, 91,700 91, uh, uh, kilograms by meters per second forward. Okay, so that's what we would have for that answer for number three. Come on, come on. That's not what I'm looking for. Oh, wait a minute. Did I get that? Did I? Here, just give me one second, guys. 
Did I get that wrong? 30 kilometers? Am I, am I having a stroke? 30 times 1,000 divided by 3,600. How did I... Oh, my goodness. I don't know how I got 9.1. 9 my bad. It's 8.3. I'll say 8.33, so it's actually 8.33. My bad. Yeah, if you were confused, I'm sorry about that. I don't know how I got that. 8.33 times 1,000 is going to be 8,330 uh, kilograms uh, by meters per second in the forward direction. We're going to try my, my uh, black marker here. It might be a little bit better. Okay, so that's A. So A, again, is going to be 8,330 uh, kilograms by meters uh, per second. Uh, we're just going to say forward. That's what we'll say here. Okay. So there's A. And then B. So with B, so B, what is the force required to stop the car? So this is where we're getting into impulse. So we have, we have our momentum, 8,330 okay, kilograms by meters per second. Um, we have time, which is 0 0.10 seconds. Um, and, and what we need to know is, is um, uh, we need to know how much force it took to stop the car. So, now, this is where it's basically like, you know, doing acceleration, anything that deals with initial and final velocity, really. So, so what would we say this kind of momentum is right here? We would say that this is our initial momentum. This is our initial momentum. What's our final? Well, if the car's coming to a stop, well, our final momentum is just zero. Okay? It's just easy as that. So, so this is our final. This is our initial. So we're wanting to, and we're trying to find the net force applied in order to stop this guy. Well, we know this. We know that the impulse, the change in, in momentum, is equal to the amount of time that the force is being applied, the net force is being applied in order to change the momentum. So here, again, it is going to be the final uh, minus, it'll be uh, the final minus the, the uh, initial, so it will be zero min open oh, actually I'll write that out. It'll be the final momentum minus the initial momentum is equal to the change in time times the net force. So it's going to be zero minus the eight thousand thirty is equal to I don't know, it shouldn't have done this, but but we'll just plug these in. Because I don't normally do this, but since I already wrote it. So we need to get this guy by himself. So then it's going to be the net force is equal to um, negative 8,330 divided by 0 0.10, which then our net force is going to be equal to 8330 divided by 0.1 which I should have known that, I don't know why I didn't know that, this is going to be 83,303 83, newtons. Now it's negative. So why is it negative? Well, remember, force can be negative, and it's negative because this is a force that's opposing your momentum. It's in the opposite direction. So it, it would be a negative here. Now, do you always have to represent it in a negative? No, it, it depends upon your, your context here. So if you were to keep it like this, yes, it's perfectly fine like that. Or you could write it like this. You could say, well, the net force is going to oppose the, it's going to oppose the, the um, momentum. Uh, and we know since the momentum's forward, this force is going to be opposite of that. So it would be 8,300 uh, or 83,300 newtons uh, backwards. Okay, you could say that, or realistically speaking, you you could just say because it's only asking for the magnitude of of the force. It's not. It's literally just saying what force is required to stop the car. Um, which actually, no, I I will say that these are the two best answers here. Now, 
I'm just going to make the, no, I'm just going to say these, this is what you should have. It should be either negative, okay, or it should be this right here because a force is a uh, uh, force is specifically a, a vector quantity. Uh, we should have the the um, uh, the direction listed at the end after the units. We should, especially if we already know the the um, direction in which the momentum's moving. Which, to be fair, they don't mention it. However. I'm sorry, but but what car is going to be moving 30 kilometers per hour backwards or sideways? <laughs> and especially when it says you're driving the car, I think we can imply here that it is very much a car that's moving forward and that the force here um, is going to be backwards. Okay, I think that's fair. So <laughs> there's B. Now, let's, it says here, now, if you hit a padded wall instead, which brings your car stop to where it, it takes a little bit longer, meaning that because there's a greater amount of time, that means you're going to have less of a force being affected at that one moment, what force is required to stop it. So, so here, it's, it's literally the same thing. We're just changing the time. So our initial, um, is going to, our initial uh, momentum is 8,330 kilograms by meters per second. Our final is still zero. I'm just going to put zero, but we know it's zero kilograms and all that good stuff. Um, and we're changing the time. And the time is going to not be 0 0.10, it's going to be 0 0.50 seconds. So we would just do the same thing. And since it was literally what we just did in the last problem, F net, and it's going to have the change in uh, momentum here over the time. So that's going to be uh, negative 8,330 divided by 0 0.5, which means that the amount of force needed here is going to be 8330 divided by 0 0.5, 16,660. Did I get that right? Yeah. 16,660 newtons uh, backwards. In order to stop that car in that amount of time. Now notice though, again notice because we increase the time, that decreases the the amount of force here. So notice with the this was this is from B. So in B, when there was only 0.10 seconds, okay, this is how much force was required in order to stop it. Now when we increase that by by 0.4 seconds. So now it's 0.5 seconds, it's half a second. It's only, it only needs um, this amount of force. It needs 16,000 opposed to 83,000 newtons of force in order to stop it. Again, why? Because we're displacing the amount of force across not only uh, physically, most likely, but also um, uh, we are also displacing it over time. The longer it's in contact with it, the less amount of force is gonna be needed at that exact moment, okay? Because it's just more or less the idea is it's more friction. Um, it's, it's, it's more friction and you're riding along it rather than, than just trying to just go, you know, zero to, or, or literally 100 to zero to, I guess, strangely say that phrase backwards. Um, so anyway, and then D, what is the purpose of airbags with respect to momentum and impulse? So what you should have realized is that, again, because we talked about it in the notes, uh, the purpose of airbags is to increase your amount of time you have in contact in the opposite direction to decrease the amount of force needed in order to slow you down. Think about that. What is going to absorb a blow better, an airbag or a windshield? Uh, if your windshield stays intact, or, or let's say just the, the steering, the actual just steering wheel. The steering wheel will have less time than an airbag, and because of that, it's going to have an increased amount of force, which means more bruises, possibly more broken bones, even possibly worse yet, death. Whereas, you know, uh, airbags, yeah, if you've ever been in a car accident before, airbags don't exactly leave you unscathed. You will get rug burn. Uh, you will get a uh, seatbelt burn. That does happen. However, um, what is better? A couple bruises and, and you know, possibly, you know, uh, a fracture here or there? 
or death. I, I think it's pretty easy and clear which one the better one is. So, sorry, a little tangent there, but airbags, it's to increase increase the amount of time that you have in contact um, to, in order to decrease the amount of force. Um, check your understanding number four. Okay, so baseball has a mass, 0 0.152 kilograms, traveling with a velocity of 37.5 meters per second. Aha, we get a direction now. East, uh, it collides with the baseball bat, and the collision lasts this long. That long collision lasts for 1.15 milliseconds, which, oops, not meters per second, sorry. Milliseconds, just force a habit. 1.15 milliseconds. Um, and then immediately after the collision, the ball is now traveling horizontally. Oops, uh, let's see. It's now uh, traveling here at 49.5 meters per second west. Oh my goodness, we can almost say that this first one that we're given is the initial and the second one is the final. We'll see if that's actually true, okay? So uh, for A, we're gonna determine the momentum of the baseball just prior to being hit, and then we're going to then see what was the average force applied by the bat to the baseball. So now let's get through this. So for for A, determine the momentum of the baseball before. So before, this is what we're traveling. We're traveling east, and it's traveling um, at this velocity with this much mass. So that's just going to be a simple, you know, momentum is equal to mass times velocity, which is 0 0.152 times 37.5. So 0 0.152 times 37.5. So it is traveling at 5.7 kilograms by meters per second to the east. That is the amount of momentum it has prior to being smacked, okay? So that's A. So then B, what's the average force applied by the bat? So we need to find two things. Well, actually, we just need to find one more thing because we've got this. So again, if this is our initial velocity, this would then make this our initial Momentum, right? Yes, Mr. Sheline, that's exactly right. I'm glad you agree, class. So then I'm going to use the same paper, actually. So then in order to find our final, one would say that you would just have to find the final uh, momentum using the final velocity. Now, the mass didn't change. Now, obviously, would the mass change? Yes. If a baseball bat hits a baseball, you're going to lose microscopic amounts of mass so in this case, we're going to say that's so negligible, we're not even going to consider it. The mass is going to stay the same. So here it's going to be the, the um, final uh, momentum is going to be equal to the mass times, in this case, the final velocity. So it's going to be, whew, sorry, 0 0.152 times, <clears throat> in this case, 49.5. So in the opposite direction, we have a ball that's now moving at uh, virtually the op or at, at the opposite. Sorry, in its arrangement of the numbers, yeah, it's going to be uh, seven point five two four um, kilograms by meters per second west. Okay, now. This is where it can kind of get a wee bit tricky. A wee bit tricky. So, what you have to do is think. Okay, I'm trying. I'm trying to think of how I can explain this the best that I can without confusing you terribly, because it it. Hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here, give me one second to just make sure double double check this and calculate this um, before I say anything. So, all 
Oh, that's right. Hmm. I think there's something missing there for me. What is it? Yeah, I think that's, yep, that's it. Okay, so uh, I just want to make sure. Now, this is where you have to be careful, and I'm sorry for that long delay there, um, but this is where you've got to be careful. Uh, uh, and you've got to think about how these are arranged due to the direction that they're moving in respect to the time in which the momentum changes. What do I mean by that? Well, you just can't subtract this from this. Why? Because they're not traveling in the same plane. So because they're not, tra or sorry, they're not traveling in the same direction on, we'll argue on the same plane. Um, technically, should these even be considered as they are? No. Why? Because think of it this way. And, and this is why, because we've talked about things like that, this is the only reason why I'm bringing this up, is because we've kind of already talked about things like this. You've got a pitcher here who's throwing a ball horizontally. I can tell you that when a batter hits the ball, it's not going to travel back perfectly horizontal on the same plane. It's going to go up, say, in that direction. So I'm sure your brain must have been like, well, Mr. Sheline, that's kind of weird because the ball's being thrown horizontally, but the ball is definitely going to be launched at like a vertical, or sorry, a horiz or my goodness, a diagonal uh, vector that is not on the same plane as it's being thrown. Um, yes. However, in this case, we are going to assume that it's going to be like this, that it's on the same plane, but it is, um, it's on the same plane, but it is, uh, uh, an opposite direction. We're going to assume that uh, just for practicing purposes here. Now in the future if we ever do talk about angles, which we will further down, then you have to make sure you take that into account. Um, just in this case because we don't talk about it that we're just talking about east and west or sorry east and west, it's going it's super general, it's super duper generic and realistically speaking has really no bearing in you know, to actual real data collecting calculations, really, because no one would actually do this. They'd be like, well, wait a minute. Hey, wait, whoa, wait, hold up. We've got to do some calculations here. We've got to do some SOCOTOA. Um, okay, so to get back on track here. So we've got the final and we've got the initial, but because if there's a change in direction, one of these has to be negative. Now, arguably, it doesn't matter, not really to the end of the, of the argument, We'll just, we're just going to say that because the we know that the direction the ball is moving at the end is westward, we're going to make that positive. And so in order to make that positive, this has to be negative. So it's going to look like this. We're going to make this the um, change in momentum is equal to uh, time times the net force. So this is going to be... Oops, this is going to be the final minus the initial uh, momentum times time. And then we got to find the net force. Um, and it's basically just like what we did a little bit ago. Wow, that looks strangely similar. Okay. So then when we plug this in, it's going to be a positive 7.524 minus a negative, which you could just put that as plus, a negative 5.7, okay? Why again? Because in this case, we're, we wanna have our answer be positive because we know it's gonna move in the westward direction. And because it's, we, we need to know what the, you know, what the force is to move it that way. 
um, the force is going to be in the same direction as, or I should say the momentum was going to be in the same way as the direction at the end. Um, or sorry, the momentum will be the in, moving in the same direction as the force applied in the end. And because of that, this just makes our job a whole lot easier and much more accurate. So, uh, and then it's going to be the time, which is 1.15 milliseconds, which actually is 0 0.00115 seconds. Okay. And then you pop that in your calculator. And then what you should get for your net force here, what you, you should get for your net force. I just had it, but I lost it. What you get is one, one, uh, 11,499 point yada, yada, yada Newtons. Okay, specifically westward. So you have one, 11,499 Newtons westward. Okay, so there is number four. And my goodness, my markers are just dying out. And all I've got left are pink and blue ones. And I don't think that pink one's going to show up all too well. Uh, let's just get through number five here real quick. So a 57 gram tennis ball is thrown upwards and then struck just as it comes to rest at the top of its motion. The racket exerts an average uh, horizontal force with a magnitude of 4.2 times 10 to the second or 420 newtons on the tennis ball. And we've got to determine these three things. Uh, we have to uh, find the speed of the ball after collision. Oh, excuse me. If the average force exerted on the ball is um, on the ball, or sorry, if the force is exerted on the ball for 4.5 4 milliseconds, and we're going to repeat that, but where our time interval is actually going to be 5.3, and then explain the meaning of the advantage of follow through in this example. So that's what we're doing here. Okay, so mass, that's actually pretty good. Huh. Mass is going to be 57 grams for a tennis ball. Okay, so, and then it's going to, uh, it's hit at rest. So that means that our velocity here is zero. Okay, because it's at, it's at its max peak. So because it's at its max peak, there is no velocity. Um, the racket exerts a horizontal force with the magnitude of, so our net force is gonna be 420, uh, newtons and then we have to do a determine the speed of the ball after collision if the average force is exerted on the ball for this long so um, we're saying this that the time we oh sorry let's see yeah the time is going to be um, 4.5 milliseconds which is equal to 0 0.0045 seconds um, for a okay so this one's a little trickier because we got to find out what the uh, not the momentum, sorry, but what is the speed of the ball, the horizontal speed now? What's the hor horizontal speed of this thing? Okay, what is it? Okay, now, so so thinking about how this is set up, let, well, let's just set it up. So it's, we're going to, this is, we've got to use impulse because we know we have to use this because A, we have to find the velocity. And the only way we can find the velocity is using all of these guys here. The only way we could do that is the impulse. Um, so we've got the change in velocity is equal to the time and the force multiply together. Um, and we're going to just break this apart. So remember the change in momentum is final momentum minus initial momentum equals the time times the net force. Now, what's the initial? Well, our initial momentum horizontally is zero. There is, there is absolutely no momentum because we're not moving. So that makes it pretty simple. So it's just simply our final momentum here. Okay. Well, what is our momentum? Well, we got to break this down too because we just can't put this together because that just we're not looking for momentum. What we're looking for here is the speed. So instead of this, it's going to be mass times the, in this case, final velocity. Okay, we've got this, we've got this, and we've got this, the net force, so we just simply solve for V. So time is going to be multiplied against the force, div all divided by the mass. So final velocity, or just velocity in general here, is going to be 0 0.0045 
times our net force, which is 420, divided by our mass, which our mass is 50, 57 grams. I just realized that. That's, I'll have to test that out. I've got a few tennis balls. I'll have to see if that's actually accurate. And then we do that, and it's going to be 0 0.0045 times 420 divided by 57. That looks like our final velocity here horizontal, horizontally here. I got else. Oh, 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 I almost did a, this is almost, oops. I was like, that seems really low. Not 57 grams, sorry. 0 0.057 kilograms. Silly me, we don't use grams. Man, that's twice in this video. Yeesh. My bad, guys. I was going to say that's super slow. So 33 point, we'll say 2 meters per second in that uh, forward. Okay, 33 meters per second forward. Okay. So that is the answer for A. Now, for B, all we have to do, we're going to use this same setup, but instead of, uh, instead of 0 0.0045, we are going to use uh, 0 0.0053 for our time. So it's going to be, again, set up exactly the same. So final velocity is equal to 0 0.0053 times 420 divided by 0 0.057, okay. And then we pop that in. And what we get here is our final velocity has, as you should have expected, our final velocity has increased, okay. Uh, we'll say one. So it's, it's 39.1 meters per second forward. Okay, so explain the meaning and advantage of follow through. Well, again, more or less what's happening here is that, that follow through increases the amount of time the, the force has and you know, the, the amount of time you're, you're applying your force. So it just, you require less of a force in order to get it to this, you know, the speed, excuse me, at this velocity. Um, and it eventually or inevitably increases the momentum. Um, and, and this kind of helps to the fact that you know the mass of the ball stays the same so bada bing bada boom this is why you follow through um this is why you fall i guess this does work in basketball that's why you follow through in basketball is that you know you don't have to like throw out your shoulder and you're using less force in that exact moment because you are you are exerting a particular amount of force over a span of an increased span of time uh versus if you didn't follow through um, in order to pr propel the ball over to the net. So it's less force means less energy. Less energy means there's more energy to use throughout the game. Um, and that's it. A little bit longer, uh, not as long as what they usually are, obviously, but, but still a good chunk of a video to watch all of these, check your understandings. So hopefully you got these answers before I even went through them. Um, if you still have questions for me, make sure you answer or you ask me those questions, you know, when, during my office hours, you know, email, whatever it is, um, all that good stuff. So. That's that. So that's the video, guys, and I'll see you guys uh, in the next one.